Hey there, this is Math 2, Unit 7, Worksheet number 4, looking at trigonometry and inverse functions. The inverse function means we're going to be looking for the angle measurements today uh, using perhaps what you might call the sine to the negative 1 or cosine negative 1, tangent negative 1. On your calculator, that's going to be using the second function on your calculator to make that work there. Just recall that for our trig ratios, we have S sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. We have cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent equals opposite over adjacent. We're going to keep those in mind as we go through today's activities lesson. Here we go. So cosine of theta. Cosine is going to be our adjacent. So this is our opposite. That becomes our adjacent and our hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta <laughs> excuse me, equals 20 over 25. All we're being asked to do today on this part is just write it in reduced fraction form. So the cosine of theta, reducing it down there, five goes in here four times, and five goes in there five times, and we leave it just like that. That's all it wants you to do on this first part, okay? For number three, it wants to know the sine. Sine is gonna be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of theta in this case here is gonna be 23 over 25. There's nothing I can do to reduce that, so I leave it just like that. Okay, now getting on to the next ones here. We're gonna find the measurement of each angle and we're around to the nearest tenth. So here we have theta, okay? And we can see it gives us a value for the opposite and we also have the value for the hypotenuse. That indicates to me that I can use the sine of theta, theta is just standing for that miss, un, missing unknown angle, and set it equal to 12.5 divided by 14. In order to get the theta by itself, it's gonna look like this. Theta is gonna equal the inverse of sine, so sine kind of minus one, times 12.5 times 14, like this, okay? And I wanna keep it in that order, so when I plug it into my calculator, okay? And I could do I could do 12.5 times 14 if I wanted to, and I get 175. So theta is gonna equal the sine of negative one times 175. So I can do that if I wanted to ahead of time or I can do it while I'm plugging things in. It doesn't make a difference. In the meantime though, here's what this, how this works. I'm gonna take the second button right here. So I'm gonna press the second on my calculator. Okay, and you can see the second comes up right there. And then I'm gonna press sine, which is here. And now I want to put in the number that's in my parentheses. And we said our number was 175. 175. I put my back parentheses on there. There. So I have the sine of negative 1 or sine, inverse sine uh, 175, which matches my problem. I say equals and I get domain error. Awesome. So let's try this again. Oh, domain error. Oh, what are we doing here? So let's try this again. Second sine and we have 12.5 times 14, oh, it's not times 14, it's divided by 14. Huh, sorry about that. So let's do divided by 14, my mistake. Divided by 14, let's go back this up here a little bit. I got ahead of myself, sorry. I'm gonna erase this. See, you make mistakes sometimes, that's okay. Let's just do it like it's written, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna do a second sign, and we'll do 12.5, and we're gonna divide that by 14. Okay, now when I press equals, I end up with 63.2. So that's my theta. My theta equals 63.2. That's the degree of that angle measurement right there. Just for kicks, you'll see what happens. If I did 12.5 divided by 14 ahead of time, that becomes a crazy number, which is 0.89, and if I kept it like that, let's see what happens if I did sine, second, sine, I made a 0.89, there's the 62.8, something close. You can see it's a little different. If I did this step first, I got 62.8 as a solution there, right? So it's not as accurate as 63.2 degrees. So it's better to go ahead and just leave it like this than it is to solve the inside part from what I'm looking at, okay? Let's look at number seven. Hopefully I don't mess this one up for y'all. Okay, so we have no opposite. We have a hypotenuse and we have an adjacent. So because I have hypotenuse and adjacent, I'm gonna use the cosine of theta and set that equal to the adjacent, which is five, over the hypotenuse, which is 11. 
Okay, so five over 11. Now to find the, the theta, I'm gonna do the theta equals uh, the cos inverse cosine of five over 11. Okay, so we can do this better here. So I push in the second, right? So second, and I do cosine, and I'm gonna do five divided by 11, parentheses on, and equals 62.96. Okay, so in terms of this one, if it's 62.96, I'm asked to round to the nearest tenth, right? That's a nine there, so this is going to round up, which means this one also rounds up, so we end up with 63 degrees is what theta is going to equal. Number nine, here's my theta. I am given the opposite, and I'm also given the adjacent, right? So that's going to be using the tangent of theta equals our opposite over our adjacent. Okay, so I can reduce this down to four sevenths as well, so that my theta equals the inverse tangent of four sevenths. So put that in there, we press our second button, and we do tangent, and we do four divided by seven, and we close it out there, and we have 29.74, that four smaller than five, so we leave it at 29.7 degrees. So theta equals 29.7 degrees. Number 11, here's my theta. I have no opposite, don't have to worry about there. I'm going across, I have a hypotenuse. So this one next to it becomes my adjacent. So I have an adjacent and hypotenuse again. That becomes a cosine of theta equals my adjacent over my hypotenuse 14. This can be reduced down to 5 sevenths. So my theta is going to equal the inverse cosine of 5 sevenths. Use the calculator again, press the second button, press cosine, making sure I have cosine inverse there. And five divided by seven, parentheses, and we get 44.4. I'm leave it just like that for my solution. Theta equals 44.4 degrees for number 11. Okay, let's now take a look at the back side. All right, so here's number 13. Here's my theta, I'll go across, that's my opposite, this is my hypotenuse, and there's my adjacent. All right, so I know I have an hypotenuse and adjacent, so that's gonna be a cosine of theta equals my adjacent over my hypotenuse, which is seven. So, it seems like I just did that one, wasn't it? Cosine, was that what I just did? Yep, sure was. So that's what we just did in the last problem, kinda of weird. So um, the theta is gonna equal the cosine of minus one and five sevenths, which we just solved in the last problem, number 11. So that's 44.4 degrees. Nice. Okay, so let's look at the word problem here. It says that, there's a bunch of tads, you can read that there. All right, Jed is building, oh, we solve it uh, using Pythagorean theorem, special right triangles, or trig ratios. Okay, Jed is building a roof for his shed. The highest point of the roof will be 13 feet higher than the top of the shed. Okay, so here's a shed. Okay, and the highest point is going to be three. Did I say 13? I don't know. Three feet higher than the top of the shed. The slanted roof will be seven feet long. So my roof is going to be seven feet long. What is the measure of the angle formed by the top of the shed and the slanted roof? So the top of the shed and the slanted roof, what is this angle measurement right there is our question. Okay, so we have a 90 degree there. So this becomes my hypotenuse. Across over here is my opposite. So I have to find the angle measurement. So this is opposite hypotenuse is the sine of an unknown angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? So now we want to find the inverse of that, so theta equals the inverse sine of 3 over 7. And so we get out our calculator here, we press the second button, and we do sine, and we do 3 divided by 7, and that's going to equal 25.37. So theta equals 25.37. 37 degrees. If we round that up to the nearest tenth, we'd round that up to 25.4 degrees, and that would be fine as well. All right, let's look at number 17. A 15 meter ladder is leaning against a wall. So here's a wall, and here is a ladder, right? It's 15 meters long. The bottom of the ladder makes a 60 degree angle with the ground. How high up the wall does the ladder reach? Okay. So that's our ladder, 15 
uh, meters long, 60 degree angle, and that's there. So we have an angle, we're looking for the opposite side, and this becomes the hypotenuse. So that's gonna be, in our case here again, a sine of 60 degrees equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by 15. So I have 15 times the sine of 60 equals x. Okay, and so I'm gonna put that in there there. We do 15 and we do sine of 60 and we end up with 12.99 is what I have there. Okay, so 12.99 could be my solution. Okay, um, hmm. interesting. Um, yep, so 12.99 is what I get for x. I round that up to the nearest tenth, and that keeps running up to 13 equals x, and that's what I have there. Is there another way of solving that one? There probably is. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? So I could look at it this way too. If this is 60, then this is 30. If this is 15, okay, that means that this is my x value, this is my 2x, and this is my x root 3, okay? This is another way of looking at it here. So to find out what that's going to be, I need to find out the value of x. So 15 equals 2x, right, based upon that there. So x is going to equal um, 15 divided by 2 which means that this value here is 15 over 2 root 3. Okay, so that becomes the solution, so to speak. So 15 over 2 is 7.5 root 3, and that's not a very nice answer, is it, right? 7.5 times root 3, I'm not sure what that means, but that would also be a solution if I use um, the, the, um, the, the principle behind 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay, so if I look at that here, what is uh, 3 and do the square root of 3? Where is my square root button at? Da, 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 da. Here it is. So second square root. Oops, let me clear that out. Let's do 7.5 and let's go here and we'll go second and we're going to do the square root of 3 and that equals 12.99. Just what we had before, so that does work out just fine. Okay, that's it for today. See you next time.